A very warm welcome to our worship. We stand to sing, To God Be the Glory. psalmist writes, a shout to the Lord in triumph for the earth, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, all, all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and love, who raised your Son, Jesus, from death to life, resplendent in glory to rule over all creation, free the world to rejoice in his peace, to glory in his justice, and to live in his love. Unite the human race in Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 34, beginning at the 11th verse. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As the shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 100, said by alternate sides, starting on this side. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of thanksgiving. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. And thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know that is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet 
and has made him the head of over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you, a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, 
Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, as we gather, we celebrate the close of our liturgical year. It's been year A, although it kind of seems a little irrelevant to talk about that now. (laughs) The first of the three-year cycle that the disciples, that disciples us, to stay in step with others, who use the same guide, other parishes, other dioceses, and even other denominations, those that use the revised common lectionary. It's been the hallmark of Anglican practice to use the same prayers, services and readings in common in diocese, province and nation. Hence the name and the position of the Book of Common Prayer, and its successes. Having these things in common reminds us that we're part of something far bigger than our individual experiences, our preferences or biases. This something bigger, of course, transcends time and space simply because God who calls us also transcends time and space. But there is another dimension For it is grounded in the incarnation when God chose to become subject to both time and space in Christ. And this incarnation and inclusion of all that is into the being of God Sorry, this is a trouble when you rely on notes when they don't make sense. (laughs) So I think the point I'm trying to get is that what's happening doesn't allow us... I know, now I've got the point of it. Sorry. Because of Christ, because of incarnation, because... As Christ, as we affirm, is uh, the, the risen, ascended Christ is uh, with the Father. All that was incarnation, all the physicality, all the temporality, all of it was to be human it, it, and creaturely is drawn into that divine presence. And I think one of the consequences of that is we can't simply be content, or we're simply not left alone to say we love God. Um, Not so sure about anyone else. This is the sort of thing that uh, 1 John uh, attacks the, the church for saying, how can you say you love God who you don't see, but you don't love your brother who you do? So we must love God, but also love all, which also includes the created order that God has embraced and loved. And this, of course, is expressed really well by Lee Hunt in a poem that he's quite famous for called Abu Ben Adhem. Now, Abu Ben Adhem was a Sufi mystic, And one of the things 
that mystics do is they get into trouble with mainline uh, organised religion because the heart of the, the mystic is communion with God. And out of that communion with God also becomes a communion with humanity. So they tend to trespass or deal lightly with boundaries. They, they hold lightly to the things that separate people, such as their experience of the love and presence of God, that it impacts immediately on how they deal with others. So I heard a few murmurs, so I guess you, this, you might well know this one. Lee Hunt was one of the romantic poets, you know, his contemporaries, Bush Shelley and all the rest of the, the mob, um, as I think it's um, one, one of these, uh, either, either Morse or the, the precursor to Morse, which is Endeavour, uh, he talks about the, the other boys in the band, as in the, all the, the romantic, romantic poets. This is, anyway, enough of that. Abu Ben Adhem, may his tribe increase, awoke one night from a deep dream of peace and saw within the moonlight in his room, making it rich and like a lily in bloom, an angel writing in a book of gold. Exceeding peace had made Ben at him bold, and to the presence in the room he said, What writest thou? The vision raised its head, and with a look made of all sweet accord, answered, The names of those who love the Lord. And is mine one? said Abu. Nay, not so, replied the angel. Abu spoke more low, but cheerily still, and said, I pray thee then, write me as one that loves his fellow men. The angel wrote and vanished. The next night it came again with a great awakening light and showed the names whom love of God had blessed. And lo, Ben Adhem's name led all the rest. Now, of course, the poem's quite heretical. Um, because, or especially, if we get caught up in limiting, limiting God's love to people of a particular group, particularly if that group happens to be one in which we are members. It is, however, completely orthodox when we have surrendered our desire to limit God's grace and love. If we are willing to comprehend that God moves, that Christ moves independent of the church, then, then we can see that that's the evidence how we love one another. Now our celebration today honours Christ as Lord of all. And the, the, the collect that we had was a, a clear extolling of the majesty of Christ and of the power and of the, of the rule um, and of the benefits of that rule. But that Christ who is honoured, of course, was the one who cried as a baby, the one who fell as a toddler, the one who loved and mourned and grieved, the one who laughed, the one who suffered and died the one who rose again. And so this Christus Rex is no exultant royal who disdains the common, but one who constantly draws the common into the realm of the divine. The parable that we have today, the teaching of the separation of the, the goats and the sheep, very powerful image that uh, echoes uh, the first reading that we had. Um, speaks of this element, this, this horizontal love and regard and um, of a love that crosses all boundaries, irreligious and unconditional. 
and I'm grateful for the commentary that I read that said we can see this because of the surprise in the voices of both groups. Both say when. When did we do this? On trial is not the capacity to perceive the divine in those needs. You might, this is my strongest bugbear, so I apologise in advance for grinding on about it. And when I do this, people look mystified as if they've never heard it. But it goes along these lines. I love the Christ in you. I see Christ in you and I love you. And I go, no. Love the person. Love them as Christ loves them. It's not about recognising Christ in others. It's about recognising humanity and responding to it. I think. Okay, rant over. (laughs) So... Back to texts. On trials, not the capacity to perceive the divine in those in need, for that's God's province. But however, the capacity to be touched by a common humanity and respond with care and attention to that humanity. And this was, this was incarnate for me this week by a chance encounter. I had just pulled into the drive um, And as I was pulling in, I could see there was a young woman walking towards the house. And as I got out, I looked up and she was still coming, so I figured she wanted to talk to me. Um, And she asked me about uh, a young man who's, uh, a homeless man who's uh, staying at the church. And I was wondering, which one? We've got two. (laughs) <laughs> and she said the one and, and I, I was a bit alert because I felt there was a some kind of a criticism or complaint coming and then she said the one with the lovely dog so that immediately put my mind at ease she had met him over in Centro and had a conversation with him and wanted to know where he kept his stuff because she had brought supplies And amongst the things that she had bought was dog food. Um, And I was blown away by this, this is lovely. But it gets better. She said, I was almost homeless. And if we're into judging people, looking at her, you would never guess. I was almost homeless. She said, I had a good job. I had 50,000 Savings in the, my bank account, had my own house. And then I had an accident and fractured my spine. And rehab ate up all my resources. I wasn't eligible for any uh, Centrelink help because I had too much in assets. If it wasn't for a friend who said, I've got a space in my place for you for as long as you need it, she knows she would have been on the street. We know nothing about her, about her faith or all the rest of the stuff. What we do know about is her humanity. And the wonderful thing about this is that it's not a made-up story. It's not an illustration to kind of prod us in the right direction. But the thing, it was an ins- it, it makes a change in me as I heard that. It was an encouragement to do the same. And so I said where it was, and she, she and her mum, two big bags, put them in there. No, 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 nothing. So when I chatted to him afterwards, his name's Zach. He didn't know who had put it there. That's the parable 
in spades. I think this parable is quite a remarkable one for a, a book which commentators describe as a midrash of the Jesus story that provides hope for the Jewish community of who are post-destruction of the temple, that God has not abandoned them, and that this way of Christ is the new way for the new Israel. For written into it is not some kind of exclusive family or, or, or group but actually uh, a far more inclusive vision of who God is calling them to be. Now this, this incident when Jesus is, is talking with his disciples, of course, precedes Jesus' betrayal, trial and crucifixion but it is informed by the way of the cross and ultimately, ultimately vindicated by the resurrection. This is the kind of king we celebrate. This is the commonwealth that we're called to inhabit. Division, strife, self-interest, arrogance in leadership and abuse and the violence are still part of our human condition. We see it writ large in the news and every now and again we see it in the mirror looking back at us. Yet above and beyond these travesties of justice are those who risk all the whistleblowers by telling what they know, those who refuse to judge a person by their circumstances, are touched to care and serve those who can't return the favour. If this sounds Christ-like to you, it is. And those who proclaim Christ as King, you and I, may it also become something that we can hold in common. The Lord be with you. And also. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and the church. Create a throne room for yourself here, O Christ, but let it be the empty seat beside the anxious, the lonely chair next to the confused a vacant pew next to the hungry, and reign, O oh Jesus, as sovereign over the forgotten. Sorry, I've just done a rather heavy course this week on domestic violence, so this is...
hitting home. May your reign be a mockery to the world, but good news to those who seek out truth. And may we join them in the searching, finding you walking the streets or breaking bread or sitting by bedsides. May we find you in border areas on the edge of things, crossing over with the foreigner. May we find you among children learning to finger paint as teachers to those who long to enjoy life again. May we find you with the worried, silenced, with nothing to say and space enough to keep it. May we find you on the wrong side of the tracks going where you should not and finding a place to lay your head among the lost. May we find you singing our songs of justice and peace and removing your crown to do so. May we find you with a word that lives in the hopes of the afraid and a comforting peace for those who are broken. May we find you laughing at the powerful unnerving what folk think so secure while welcoming those who have nothing into your throne room. O oh Jesus, reigning in the world with your upside down kingdom, may we find, find the, faith the faith to stand, to stand with, with you, sovereign, sovereign of life, life and, and servant of all. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, <coughs> confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, make her and our judge. <coughs> we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have, have failed to do. We have not loved our neighbor our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in the ends of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. You have highly exalted him and given him the name which is above all other names, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them, may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And I was proclaimed a mystery of faith. Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing Sing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we, we all share, share in the one bread. bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. 
Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. This is the Lord's table. All who seek God's mercy are welcome. Please come. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. God of glory, you send your son, Jesus, sent your son, Jesus Christ, into the world to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Strengthen us who share this meal to continue his mission in living the good news we proclaim. Most loving God, you, you send, send us, us into, into the world you love. love. Give, Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage, courage in the power of your spirit. spirit. Right. Uh-huh. Advent stars. On the way out, check out, we've got some uh, knitted ones by Anne. Thank you, Anne. They look, they're going to be great. And if you have any questions about how, how they've been done, talk to Anne. She's uh, used starch on them, so you might want to find out about that. Um, there's... A couple just cut out of plastic. There's black ones there. Not that we're going to have black stars, not black holes at all, but no. Um, we, they're ready to be painted or covered in black, yeah, that sort of stuff. Anyway, so that's, that's in progress. I was asked the important question, when? Um, I think as long as we have, have them in by uh, the first Sunday in December... That, that we can we can work with that, so we still they'll be up for for most of Advent, but we we will be flexible and understanding and all the rest of the stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, so far, we've got I think it's nine um, recorded, which is fantastic. I'm changing tack slightly. I'm going to be sending out the script to people, so you'll be familiar with this process. And if you are happy to say yes, then send me a recording of uh, that script and then I'll incorporate that, incorporate that into the video presentation. Um, is everyone up with what the Jesse tree is all about? No. Let me know and we can phone a friend. <laughs> but yes. Well, I'll get you here and I'll do a video of you. That'll be all right. Good. Good. <laughs> okay. Next. Um, so the 4th of December is our, our Christmas sundowner. Uh, that's just there to remind us that it's coming up. I jumped the gun last night. I thought it was next week, but it's not. When you, when you, when you do stuff that's always one week ahead, you kind of lose time. Birthdays. Anyone have a birthday or an anniversary? In that case, stand. Christ, our exalted King, pour upon you his abundant gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.